Welcome to TOSB Conversation Starters. I'm Shreya and you have tuned into another interesting episode in our special International Women's Day edition. For this capsule, we are in conversation with women who are doing trailblazing work in their respective fields. And today we have one such fascinating figure, spaceship designer and serial space entrepreneur Dr. Sushmita Mohanty. Welcome to our podcast Sushmita. Thanks Shreya, happy to be here. Lovely. I'm really intrigued by the unique titles that have been bestowed upon you. You've been called the moonwalker by the press. You are the protege of Arthur C. Clarke, the late science fiction writer. You live a fascinating life without boundaries. I'm sure all our listeners want to know what does a spaceship designer actually do? Well, a spaceship designer works at the confluence of design, architecture and engineering. Uh, What we do is we combine these disciplines and look at mission specifications or mission scenarios given to us by a client. The client could be a space agency like NASA or ESA. And in some cases, we work on projects which are somewhat imaginary and futuristic in nature. So we go about designing and building prototypes of space habitats, uh, rovers, spacesuits, And we even sometimes design protocols for communication between astronauts and robots. So I think our field of space architecture and design is a very niche area. The clients are few, and yet it's very exciting because in some ways, uh, on occasion, we get to build science fiction, but in real terms. So we design things for living on Moon and Mars um, or in low Earth orbits in the near future. Thanks for giving us this sneak peek into your regular day. You know how they say it's easier to visualize the journey in retrospect once you've reached the milestone. But how did this all start? What actually inspired you to pursue such an unusual journey? I had the most fantastic childhood, Shreya. Uh, I grew up in uh, what I call Sarabhai Ahmedabad. So in a city of textile mill owner families, who patronized both science and technology and also art, architecture and design. Uh, This is the early 70s and 80s Ahmedabad when I grew up. So I was surrounded by the pioneers who started India's space program, my dad being one of them, uh, and Sarabhai, who is the founder of the Indian space program, is from Ahmedabad. Uh, And at the same time, I was in the company of amazing architects who were invited by these industrial families to build private residences and public buildings. So you could say that I grew up at the confluence of architecture and space. And if you juxtapose the two together, what you have is space architecture, which in a way is an invented discipline, but that's what I was smitten with uh, as a school girl. Wow, so you were at the right place at the right time, but you leveraged it all so well. And how do you think space travel is going to change with the entry of private companies? I think space travel, uh, now that we have companies such as Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, who are offering rides for now to suborbital space and eventually to orbital space, um, I think there there are good things that will happen and there are things that are worrisome for us in the space industry. So the good things that will happen is anybody who wants to go into low Earth orbit can do that by by buying a ticket. Uh, If you look at the number of astronauts and cosmonauts and taikonauts that have flown since 1961 when the first human spaceflight happened, when Yuri Gagarin flew into space, it's roughly somewhere between 500 to 600 of them, which if you think about it, in almost... Uh, 60 years is a very small number of humans who have experienced weightlessness, uh, who have been to low Earth orbit. So I think the entry of these private companies will change that completely. Uh, Maybe we will see 500, 600 of them flying annually instead of over, you know, six decades. So that's the good side. The, The side that worries me is that low Earth orbit is already cluttered we have millions of man-made debris objects in low Earth orbit, and debris moves at enormous speeds of 28,000 kilometers per hour. 
So what I'm trying to refer to here is that pollution through human activities has already reached a crescendo in low Earth orbit. And by having commercial space travel, uh, it's only going to add to the pollution. And given that we live in times of climate change, I look at the climate of low Earth orbit integral to the Earth's climate. And I think that being someone who is um, a climate action advocate, that's something we need to keep in mind. Okay, that does sound scary, but I'm glad that, you know, there are people who are responsible like you working strenuously towards this, uh, you know, larger objective. So, Sushmita, you co-founded India's first private space startup, Earth to Orbit. Do you think all this will change the perception about India in the context of private space enterprise? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, India has one of the most accomplished government space programs. And remember, India launched its first experimental satellite in 1963, November. So in other words, we have one of the oldest space programs in the world, and we are easily in the top five when it comes to technological capabilities. However, it's only in recent years that the government is starting to wake up to the idea that in addition to having a fantastic government space program, we also need to encourage private enterprise and treat them not as competitors to our space agency, but as allies. So as of today, not only do we have legacy companies, large corporations that have been contributing to our space agency's uh, space program over the last uh, five or decades, but we have what we call quote unquote, new space companies. Companies started by young engineers, some of them right out of college, who are working on cutting edge technologies, you know, everything from green propulsion to hyperspectral satellites to uh, single wall carbon nanotubes. So these new space companies are what I am personally excited about. And I think the world is starting to notice. So yes, the perception about India's space program is definitely undergoing a tectonic shift. So not only uh, does the world realize that India has a fantastic space program, uh, and they are also starting to wake up to our, our entrepreneurs who are who are running these startups and doing fantastic cutting edge technological stuff. That's very fascinating. So as I'm talking to you, I'm realizing that what we speak of as space technology also has repercussions in the more earthy realms. So can you shed light on how your work in space relates to innovation and sustainability here on Earth? So I think um, I'll take the two words separately, Shreya. I think the word innovation applies to the work that I do in the realm of human space exploration, right? Um, so my company in Vienna that I co-founded back in 2005, it designs future systems for living and working in outer space. And the way we approach the design of these future systems, we often draw inspiration from earthly biological systems. What I mean by that is there is this field of biomimicry where we look at, let's say, think about how a uh, a jellyfish propels through water, right? You can get inspirations on new ways of propulsion or look at how a spider walks across a wall. So that gives you ideas, uh, design ideas of how you can design the translation of a rover in a difficult terrain on another planet. So what I'm trying to say is often innovation stems from how biological systems here on Earth are designed to function so efficiently and so beautifully that we as designers can use that and create innovative new designs. That's one way of looking at it. The other thing I would like to connect Earth and space in sort of a seamless connection is that things that we do in extreme environments in outer space can inform how we live and work in extreme environments on Earth. And these extreme environments could be the polar regions, could be underwater, could be in extremely dense cities like New York, Mumbai, Sao Paulo, Tokyo, or they could be in extreme situations such as the earthquake that we just had in Turkey and Syria, 
or in extreme situations like, say, uh, you know, the, the, the landslides that we are seeing in the Himalayas. So there is a lot of reciprocity between how we live in extreme environments on Earth and off the Earth, right? Sustainability, I think the, the idea of sustainability is an old one, but it is starting to uh, get, it's, start, it's starting to get a lot more attention because of the several crises that the world is going through. We had a health crisis, the pandemic. We have an ongoing climate crisis where we are seeing a lot more climate spikes and frequent climate disruptions. And I think even in outer space, we space people are starting to worry about the 300 million plus man-made debris objects that are orbiting the Earth. And these debris objects can be anywhere from a dead satellite to you know, the last stages of a rocket that has launched a payload into outer space. So I think my think tank, so I launched a space think tank in India in 2021, October. We are looking at how can we become part of an international conversation that is taking a very serious and in-depth look into the space environment, uh, how we are polluting it, how we need to declutter it, how we need to bring in the right kind of law and policy to be able to address these problems. So I think sustainability shows up in my work through things that I do uh, via my think tank. So I think that sort of kind of answers your question, I think. Wow, listening to you seems like watching a sci-fi movie. You know, it's so amazing, uh, Sushmita, that we've almost reached the last section of this podcast and I'm still not done reading out your titles and accomplishments. So you are also a BBC 100 Women Laureate from 2019 who is crafting an inspiring female-led future. So since this is an IWD edition, is there any advice or takeaway from your personal journey that you would like to leave with our female listeners? Uh, yes, I think this is a great occasion to do that, uh, Shreya. So I would tell your female lis listeners that don't always segregate life through gender. It's okay to do it in certain contexts, but not all contexts. Remember that being a woman has amazing advantages. Um, we often get drowned in a sense of victimhood or disadvantages, which I'm saying, of course, they are there. But I think look at some of the advantages we have. I'll give you an example from my personal journey. So between 2009 and 2016, I did something very different from what I usually do, you know, as a, as a spaceship designer, as a space think tanker. I played the role of a diplomat, a space diplomat. So I went to Washington, D.C. and to New Delhi on multiple occasions during these years to talk to diplomats, to talk to bureaucrats about why we need to build a bridge between the U.S. and India and despite a standing U.S. embargo of 1998, which the U.S. imposed on India when we conducted nuclear tests, uh, which doesn't allow American companies to spell, sell space components to India, it was impossible for Americans to, to launch their satellites on an Indian rocket, because after all, a rocket is a missile, right? So being a woman space diplomat had advantages which I personally think uh, a male counterpart couldn't have accomplished. Because I think I brought certain approach to trust building between the two nations, despite an embargo, that I personally feel is unique to how we women think and approach things in life and in business. And I think the other uh, takeaway I would, I would like our female listeners to, to think about is develop some appetite for risk. It's okay to fall. It's okay to get hurt. I think the beauty of taking risks in life is, is something you will realize only further down your life's trajectory and when you look back. So don't be afraid. Be fearless. I think those are the two things I would, I would want to leave them with. Thank you so much, Sushmita, for your time. Your journey is truly inspiring in many ways. If you would like to invite Dr. Sushmita Mohanty to your organization, reach out to our team at TOSB. Until then, this is Shreya Pilani and you are listening to TOSP Conversation Starters.